Hey guys, it's Matt Hannum here and welcome to the Amplify Your Business podcast. Anyway, this is episode, I think, 17 of the Amplify Your Business podcast. I probably just said that in my intro, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm here today with Paul Ramondo. What's up? Bro, I, I, you're on my list, man. When I first podcast, Paul Ramondo was probably like top, the first 10 people I wrote down. I was like, oh, going to have this guy. Uh, just, you, you got great energy, man. I've just been looking forward to this one. So, I appreciate yeah, that. Awesome. Thank you. So glad to have you here. Great, um, great to be here. Number seven. I got here on, got here on time as well. I was you like, got here on time? You, sent you a little Instagram message like might be late and then I rocked up 5.30 in the dot. It was good. I, I love how you travel. I mean, how do, I mean we're, we're, it was we cool. are filming this. Yeah, but let's, yeah. how, how did you travel? I got here on my booster board. <laughs> <laughs> the stairs are there as well. No, I'm a booster board. It's my favorite thing. That's Pro, like literally like the most emotional utility that I've ever like talking like an economist, but yeah, most, emotional, okay. most emotional utility that I've ever got out of purchasing anything ever. Most emotional utility. Yeah. I love that. That's, yeah, that's, that's it's a good. High, a high, high emotional return on investment for that purchase. I've done over a thousand kilometers on it, so it's uh, that's pretty serious. I, yeah. I would guess that a lot of them haven't done many k's. Like yeah, most. well, I don't. The thing is, I haven't really ridden it much here in Perth because I mean, I live a two-minute walk from my office. Yeah, uh, which is very much on purpose. Do you want to minimize that time of the commute? Yeah. Um, but when I was, I've taken this traveling with me all the time, which is a great way to explore places. And yep. like when I was living in New York last year, the best way to get around the city. Yeah. Amazing. What so kind of distance fast. is it? Well, how, what does it cover? Like, what kind of distance? Um, so the battery I've got in there at the moment is like a standard range battery. Yeah. Um, and I think I get about depending on how. It really depends on how much you want to smash the speed. Yeah. Um, so I can get up, get up to about thirty-two kilometers ish an hour. Yeah. Um, but if I'm going that fast, you'd sacrifice your speed. So if it's on eco mode, I get about eight ish k's. It's pretty like, good, really. Yeah. Extended range battery shipping uh, which should be here at the end of the month, Sick. and I'll be able to escape from Subiaco to Hillary's on one charge. Oh, that that'd Which be, would be sick. That'd be nice, yeah. mate. There's a vlog coming up, obviously. There is definitely a vlog coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Anyway, we haven't even got to that. Like, so, who are you, Paul? Uh, um, and, who am I? Know, what, what do you do? Uh, why, why are you here? I am a uh, extremely energetic, um, I guess, passionate digital marketer. Um, I love what I do. I love all things tech. I love all things digital. Um, I love creating content and I love helping people just in the digital space and just getting them excited to about their business and... Yeah, awesome. That's kind of what I do. <laughs> you are, mate. Like, definitely, so much energy. Like every when I've met you, when I see you online, you're always just like pumping with energy. I mean, it might have something to do with this monster, oh, monster mate. energy, but maybe not. I really I want to drink natural. some. I'm like, I feel like it's five thirty at the moment. Like I've usually not. I finish work by now, but. I'm ready to go. Well, uh, actually, I feel bad now because I'm thinking, look, I, I gave you a small gift of a, a monster. No, I, I really, I, very thoughtful. I appreciate it. But I don't think I've given any other podcast guests a gift before. Well, <laughs> look, I mean, you know, reading between the lines, I'm obviously a favorite. So, no. Well, I, I usually have um, single malt lying around. Oh, so. my man. Look at you. <laughs> so thoughtful. Awesome. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> look, we'll, leave, we'll leave it for 6 a.m. when yeah, you get, when you get working it. on the next day, ne next couple of days. But um, yeah, so digital marketer, content creator. Um, but I guess, where did it all start? So, where did it start? Um, I, uh, <laughs> I, when uh, I was in high school, I was always into digital and tech and stuff. I was yep. a bit of a nerd in high school. Um, no, I was a massive nerd in high school. Um, and I used to, uh, I, if I go all the way back, I uh, don't know many people know this, but I used to, uh, you, back when it was called Flash, I used to animate uh, stick figures killing each other when I was like 13, 14, <laughs> 15. And I used to, like, uh, there's a website called stickdeath.com. used to be all over newgrounds.com and stuff. This is like web, like web 1.0. Yeah, like yeah, I remember. Meta <laughs> stuff, right? Um, and I was just really into the whole creative process. And yeah. um, I think if I go all the way back, that's kind of where like the creative side of things happened. Um, I was always into digital and tech in high school and then uh, did my TE and uh, was like, yeah, I want to, you know, be a responsible, successful adult uh, in, in my... Uh, as we're told to be. As we're told to be. And, um, you know, went to, uh, went to university and uh, got a fancy piece of paper. And before, pretty much up until I think the final uh, semester of my degree, I was like, yeah, I'm going to become an accountant. Yeah. Part of my degree is in accounting. So yeah, six figure salary by 26, be sick, be just balling. <laughs> be, you know, that was my idea of like success, right? Yeah. Um, money. Um, and uh, the only problem with that was, um, I so I went to the States and I studied there for about a, uh, for a year, did an exchange and that was amazing. And I had the only part of my degree left when I came back was my accounting degree because it wasn't allowed to do it over there if I wanted to become a child what, accountant. What's, what was the other half? What did you do? Um, so I did a, what did I do? <laughs> I did a Bachelor of Commerce at UW yep. and um, did a double major in financial accounting and marketing 
a double minor in business law and economics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I was like setting myself were, up for were, a nice you're going little... for serious, like, you know, serious cred. Yeah, yeah. I was, I mean, yeah, I was like, yeah. It's, um, Look at me, mum. Yeah, yeah. Like make mum and dad proud. And, you know, like, honestly, back then, that's what I thought I wanted to do. Yep. And I really enjoyed economics and accounting in high school. Like really enjoyed it. Um, I, you know, with accounting, I was like, oh, I can make this stuff balance. And it's like the trial balance equals that. I can't even remember how to balance a balance sheet. It's been so long. But oh, you could. I, I probably could <laughs> if I had to. Um, but yeah, I was just, oh, it's so cool. I like the, how it all connects and makes sense. Um, and then I finished my degree or final semester of my degree after being on exchange and kind of realized that I just fucking hated accounting and didn't want to become an accountant. <laughs> and at that point in time as well, I'd also like, cause I was a year behind uh, variable to all of my friends cause I was enjoying I was enjoying uni so much that I decided to pick up an extra degree because I was like I don't want uni to ever end like this is, I want this fun time to last forever. The perennial student. Yeah, straight <laughs> up, man. I, like so, I picked up an economics degree. <laughs> why I did that? I know exactly why I did that. I just wanted the good times to roll, yeah. right? I was having a great time at uni. Fair enough. And um, then was like, nah, I just want to go out of uni and turn that degree into a minor, which was nice. Got to save that. But anyway, I digress. Um, you're gonna have to pull me back. So go off on too many tangents. But it's basically, right. tangents um, are good. Basically, I uh, <laughs> I didn't want to become an accountant, and I had all my friends that were already um, you know accountants and working for um, you know pretty prestigious firms and just absolutely hating their lives. And I was like, I already hate this, and I'm at uni. I don't want to do that. You know, you I know? did that too, right? Did you? You know, I'm a chartered accountant. There you that go. Did, there you I go. started doing accounting just marketing. Do I did one unit of marketing. I was like. I could figure this shit out yeah, later. Yeah. So then, I, okay, I'll do accounting. It seems much harder. I got somehow just fell into it. I was in insolvency. The only reason I even got oh, through, gosh. if I was doing tax, I don't think I would have even made it. But insolvency, I was like 19 years old, all of a sudden running two or three businesses for yeah. people, figuring out these problems. And I was like, okay, this was kind of good for my ego mm. for a few years. Mm. I learned a lot. But then I was like, this was never my choice. Mm. Like it would clearly, and you know, you got to that stage as well. You like, you, you got there earlier. I, yeah. I, I fell into, I was looking for a part-time job. Somehow I ended up in a firm and all of a sudden yeah. I was running three businesses and going, wow, I'm earning some, some money yeah. or something. Oh, sort of. Yeah. Little, not, not, uh, I think I would have earned more money at Macca's yeah, yeah. <laughs> per hour. Yeah. But you know, I was well, doing that. And that's so <laughs> tricky, me, man. Like when you go down the whole route of like, you know, if you're, you're starting on a 55 or so, you know, salary a year and you know, they're paying for you, you become a CA and all that kind of yeah. stuff. And that's great. But then you extrapolate and you work out what kind of money you're making per hour. And it's, it's like it was below, insane. It's below the poverty line. Well, we did seven you days. Know? You'd work six hardcore days and your seventh day was that's the study. The well, that, that's how it worked. But anyway, so, yeah, so, right, what, yeah. so you, got, you got there early, right? So you, you, how, do you, how do you pivot? Like, what did you do there? Um, so I was really lucky. Like, going on exchange was probably, like, the biggest. Um, so I, went, I stayed in the States. It's probably the you know, biggest life, best year of my life I yeah. spent away. Um, what about some States? I went to the University of Vermont. Okay. So Burlington, Vermont, which is pretty much like you put a pin through or a pole through the earth, through Perth. And it comes out in um, Maine, which is the state next to Vermont <laughs> yeah. or Vermont. Um, and yeah, I <laughs> I had never seen snow before, and I basically experienced. I was there for about a year and had eight months worth of snow, which was hectic. I'd never seen snow; and it was just wow. really cold. Yeah. yeah, but it was the best, the best, best time. And that experience kind of, um, I don't know, I guess, equipped me to realize that there's more to life than <laughs> balancing balance sheets and uh, trial balances and that kind of stuff. So. Um, around that time when I finished uni, I was jobless, right? But I, no, I didn't do any internships. I did yeah. nothing. Like, I was like, here for a good time. Um, and then I was always thought I was going to become an accountant. I was like, I'll figure it out when I get back home from exchange. Um, and then I finished my degree and lucky, I, luckily I did marketing, which I had a real passion for. Yeah. Never thought I'd do it professionally, but I just really did it because I enjoyed it. It was mm -hmm. the only part of the degree. I enjoyed my business law, but it was the only part of my degree that I really enjoyed. And um, then I found myself working. I was unemployable essentially like you know you drop 30 40k in a degree you had, we, you had too many degrees like you had you had too many angles because oh. they could only see a straight line well, that's right? it you have to actually almost let go of some of the other like you can't have seven you know seven core interests or you know seven areas that you're you know excelling at yeah you've got to you've got to show them one or two and show yeah. this is i and this is my path to be like you yeah right because that's what they want to say 100 percent. and it. i also had zero experience yeah. um well that's a lie i had experience in marketing so actually was um, part of an event management company back in my uh, emo music days. Um, that's kind of how I got to start in social media marketing. So right. I used to um, do marketing uh, for a small events company, uh, doing shows over at HQ just down the road, yep. um, using MySpace to promote gigs because it was like you either take out a 500 or 300 or $500 you know, ad in Express Magazine back in the day, yep. or you can generate a lot of traction on MySpace for free and actually yep. get people 
you know, there's a the, the return on investment was always going to be positive because yeah. it's just your time. Uh, that's kind of how I got into social, um, and yeah, basically spent the seven months after I finished my degree working four odd jobs. I worked at a bakery for ten years up until I started my career. Um, I was DJing, I was doing events, I was working at selling phones, just every, anything I could get my hands on just yeah, to kind of get by do? and pay off, have money live and start paying off money. Because you're not a sit still kind of guy, I assume you weren't no. even then, right? So yeah, no, gotta, I, was, I had to something. do something, right? And then yeah. in between all of that, I was applying for jobs, applying for jobs, yeah. applying for jobs, and just rejection after rejection after rejection, which I look back on now, I'm like, it was just fucking, it was, gave, me my, uh, gave me my stripes. Yeah, well, that's, that's it, right? I was talking to a guy just an hour or two ago, he was... um. He'd come in. He, he he's struggling. What do I do? A bit of purpose, and I'm like, you don't get it. But like, you look back at exactly yep. where you're sitting right now, thinking like, well, a laughing at it, but be thinking about, you know, that that was just that valley to get back to that peak. And without that, it's not interesting, right? So you, you've got to go through those. You got to you got to get some stripes. I look at that when I was in insolvency. Like we got brutalized yep. in there for four or five years, but it was probably the best experience and the best learning curve I've ever had. Hundred percent. You don't and get it makes, it. it makes you humble as well. And yeah. It, and I think it's a sweet. Um, a sweet kind of, uh, it's, I, don't know, it's, I sickly rom- romanticize with it, but um, you know, when you put yourself through that kind of hardship and then you come out, you're like, yeah, I did it. Yeah, let's go, yeah. let's go. And it's, you're better for it, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a catch 22, isn't it? Like, cause there's a bit of ego in that too. Oh, you're, like, you're like, yeah, I like, I did that and I braved that. Yeah. And then you realize, well, did I have to and why? Like there's some, like, some really good angles to it. Yeah. But then, and I think there's some also some, yeah, like it's, it's, it's this sick, you, you, it's this sick line of this is exactly who you need to be. Yeah. And you, there's certain elements where you can walk that line and it really makes sense. And other times you're like, this is just batshit crazy. What yeah. am I doing? Like 100%. this does not make any sense to me up in, 100%. Up in my head. But um, so what, I, so what there? Oh, sorry, you go. No, 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 I was just going to say, um, I think with, with the ego thing as well, I think it's a really fine line of, um, you know, I don't think ego is inherently a bad thing. I think no. you know, there's a really good book that I've, one of my favorite books are by Ryan Holiday called yep. Ego is the Enemy. Amazing, amazing book. Yep. I, I don't inherently think ego is a bad thing, but I just think it's like your perception of your own ego. Yep. That's, the, that's the issue, right? So I think, especially when, you're, well, when I was starting my career, I think it was a balance of like, you're humbled, but then you're also kind of need to have that ego or that protection or that self-efficacy, I think, yep. is probably the better word. Um, to kind of get you through it and persevere. Otherwise, you can throw the towel in. You, and it's you game need to over. be balanced, man. Straight that's up. that's the thing. You can't be both ways, and that's like so. You do need equal parts ego and humility. And you know, we heard we hear a lot of people talk about this stuff. But the more and more, you know, I, I see more people, and I I sort of study more people. You just and it makes so much more sense. And you do see super confident people then just have that huber, you know, that, that humility level, which Straight is just. Up. It, it makes so much sense because you realize when you're out of balance and that's when it, that's when it's, things aren't going right for you. So what, whether it's, you know, you're too cocky and you're getting out there and your head's just like exploding or yeah. if you're just like crumbling away into a hole, you get nothing done. Yeah. You've got to have some ego and 100%. you've got to believe in yourself and push on. So so what next? Um, yeah, so I had a sliding doors moment. Um, so I was unemployed for, well, not unemployed, but I was working, you know, I was working full-time hours around 40, 42 hours a week doing yeah. all the odd jobs and, um, I'd been applying a rejection after rejection after rejection. And then um, I had two promising offers. One was at a social media startup agency. And, th- you know, I'd already had two interviews for them. And another was at um, Automotive Holdings Group, um, being a marketing coordinator um, for selling cars, essentially. And, you know, one was paying $8,000. Well, the uh, Automotive Holdings Group uh, was paying $8,000 more than the other job. And I wanted the social media job. And yeah. then... You know, I was, you know, I think it's like I said, six or seven months that I was without a job. And literally on the same Friday, like within an hour, yep. like literally sliding doors moment, I was working, selling phones. I remember I was selling phones in Warwick. I remember walking outside because they knew I was trying to get a career job. I walked, taking phone <laughs> calls. One phone call, one bang from the um, AHG offering me the job and, you know, had a bit of uh, nice little frills uh, to it as well and more money. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll, uh, I'll get back to you by the end of the day. I had to decide that day. Um, or it was going to someone else. Um, and then uh, an hour later, I had the phone call from the social media agency, which was you know eight grand less and just no, no benefits, no, no nothing, but it was what I wanted to do. And I was yeah. had to decide like that day. And it was like, you know, after that amount of time, just like waiting, waiting, waiting. And then all in one day on a lunch break, I had to make decisions. Spoil for choice. That's it, mate. That's it. We are so <laughs> burdened by choice. So um, I basically just went with what am I going to enjoy more, yeah. right? And you know, if I wanted the money, or if I wanted, yeah, if I, I guess if I wanted the money, I would um, would be would have been doing accounting. I wouldn't have been working all these odd jobs, and that's what my passion was in. And I always think back to that moment because I'm like, where would I be if I didn't take the uh, 
take the, I'm, I'm sure I probably would have ended up back in the same path, but uh, I'm glad that I went the route that I did. Yeah. So the lesson that I learned there was just always just go with what makes you happy and what you're going to get the most emotional return on investment from. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So I mean, fast forward from there. I mean, I think I think you dipped in and out of it, but if you basically worked in social media for a little while, and then eventually you started your own shop. Yeah. I mean, um, how did how did you go? How did you start? Like, what was the what was the tipping point that made you um, basically jump ship from being employed and, and moving into to self employment? So, uh, kind of a very similar narrative to how I got it started initially. Um, I worked in the agency world. I worked, um, you know, on client side and then mainly agency side. Um, and you know, dabbled my toes in you know, both waters. Yep. Um, I had a lot of experience and I was getting really great results with my clients and um, you know, I, looked, I had the experience, I had the runs on the board and it was kind of like, do I stay in Perth, do I move to Melbourne? And the only way I was gonna move to Melbourne was I wanted to start working with big, bigger brands and you know, build my career portfolio and that kind of thing, right? And there's not really much going on in Perth. So I was like, well, I need to get a job offer from Melbourne, I'll fly over there to do the interviews, I don't care what I have to do, I'll make it happen. Um, and applied for job after job after job again and again and again and rejection 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 and thing is like i knew the jobs and this is kind of like whole ego um humility thing um with the internet being so transparent like i could literally see the work of and especially in our industry you, mm. i could literally see the work of the people that um you know have my position yeah. or the position i was going for yeah and i knew that i was overqualified and you know better i guess um which was really really painful because it's just like i'm not even getting emails back and yeah. this is this is shit like this is really frustrating so that was um there was about another eight months of that mm. um i turned 25 in 2015 and i still remember the day this is about time i was trying to like move on with my career and the, the january 1st or january 2nd i was on holiday over east and my year my date of my i'm 25 it was 25 in 2015 sorry and my year correlates with the five with the five, right? First or second of January, 2015, I just lost my mind. I was just, I had like quarter, like quarter life crisis. I was like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? This is shit. No <laughs> job, I was applying for jobs left, right and center. I wasn't happy, um, wasn't fulfilled. Where am I going? Getting nothing back. No one's even answering my emails or phone calls. Like, don't even get me started about recruiters. And um, yeah, so- We can go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, we won't, <laughs> no, we won't. Not. But I, don't know, I mean, no disrespect <laughs> to anyone in recruitment, but yeah. it just wasn't for me. And um yeah i uh went through four or four or so months more it's actually a good story i haven't talked about story in ages um <laughs> so i went through four or five um more months of that and i'll oh, probably four more months and i reached out because i want to get a job at facebook right and this is um about a year or it would have been 2015 so three years after the ipo and facebook um small business was just getting started in australia and i reached out to the head of small business who's now a good friend of mine and mm. a mentor of mine um nick nick, nick bowditch yeah. yeah and um I sent him an email just on a whim and I was like, hey man, um, my name's Paul. Um, look, I'd really uh, love to give you a call, have like five minutes of your time just to get your two cents of the best way to get started um, in Facebook uh, or you know, into a social, uh, you know, in that realm, I guess. And um, so I sent the email, wasn't expecting anything back. I was just like, you know what? Like at least I tried, right? And then, and like in the email signature, in my email signature, I used to have my mobile number and literally 10 minutes later, I get a phone call from this random number and it was Nick and he gave me a call and he was like, hey, Nick Vodich here and um, shout out Nick, what's up? And um, yeah, I think that's the phone call. When I look back on it, that's kind of where everything like changed. Um, we had a big chat and he was like, mate, like literally even, even on that phone call, he was like, why the fuck do you want to like work for someone else? Like, don't you, I've looked at your stuff, like you obviously don't want to work for someone else. Like, like no, I want to work for Facebook or Instagram. Like, come on, bro, help me out. And um, yeah. Uh, so we organized our beers. We were speaking at a conference two months later. We had beers and um, yeah, that, uh, that again, that conversation, you know, I was going into the frame of like, let me help get me a job at Facebook. Come on, help me out. And um, again, he was like, you don't want to work for Facebook. You want to do your own thing. I was like, no, fuck it. I don't want to do my own thing. I was like, oh, maybe. But then I was like, you know, the reason I didn't want to do my own thing was fear. Like, what if I fail? Like, you know, like, the, the usual suspects. The usual suspects, right? <laughs> but he planted the seed. And that was also yeah, right. around the time that more and That's more... That's cool. Of, I didn't know that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, he planted the seed and, um, you know, he knows that. And I'm still... Thanks again, Nick. Um, eternally grateful to him for that. And then um, then I kind of went down the rabbit hole of, all right, if I do start my own thing... Because I had a small consulting business at that point in time. Yeah. Um, and I was like, if I do start my own thing, what 
how am I going to do that? Right. Like, and then what do I need? Like, and then I was like, oh, this, I can't do this. It's too stressful. Like, you, yeah. Now, once you get to that point, you're already in. Yeah. You just haven't figured out how you're going to do it yet. Yeah. That's it. So <laughs> then changing I, your mind, right? That's it. Right. And so I spoke to old man Ramondo. I love my dad. Love my parents. They're the best. And, and um, he said, go get a job. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, dad, dad, old man Ramondo, Nick. So dad was like, um, he said, I still remember it as well. It's probably two of the most powerful things. One was, was what Nick had, the seed that Nick had planted. And then two was um, my dad asked me, like, what's the worst thing that could happen to you if you start this, right? And I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, fuck, well, you know, I've been living out of home for about two years or a year and a half at that point in time. And I was like, fuck, well, to be honest, dad, the worst thing that would happen is asking you to fucking move back in, right? Like that, that was failure to me, like failure, <laughs> right? Like I don't want to move. I love my parents. <laughs> fuck, I don't want to live with them, right? Like... Yeah. And he was like, so are you cool to ask us to move back in if all else fails? And I was like, well, could you let me move back in if I go through all my savings and my, my house fund and all that kind of stuff? Like, and if all else fails? He's like, of course. So what are you doing? And I was like, all right, I guess I'm starting a business. It's so good. Right? And it was just kind of that realization. And I mean, beyond that, if you talk more, less micro and more macro, like, as an Australian citizen, like the worst thing that can happen to you, right? Like as an Australian citizen, if you fuck up so monumentally badly, like you just fuck up so badly, the worst thing that happens to you is you get paid by the government to live. Dude. Right? And, and then free healthcare. It's like Australia is amazing. And then when you put that, I mean, you know, you have to you'd eat shit and, you know, it wouldn't be a very nice lifestyle or whatever, but... You know, at the end of the day, like if that's the worst thing that can happen to you as an Australian citizen and you want to start a business. It's not bad. Like, look, I spent five years in insolvency and I watched people go bankrupt, bankrupt, bankrupt. The only people that it really hurt were the people that let it get in their head. Yep. They're everyone else, like most of the time, people weren't even angry at them. They, people were upset. They lost money, but they 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 understood. They empathised. The tax man doesn't care. They just came in and had their cup of coffee and realised there was no money left yeah. and the move on. Like the ones that like were literally moulded into their business and they couldn't detach mentally. They ended up you know with a lot of health problems and other things. But like no one like even in that situation, there was always someone that like, would help them. Yeah. There was always, you know, it doesn't matter how they, they, big business, small business, I saw a lot of different blow ups. There's always, the, yeah, the worst thing, we're, we're in an amazing country 100%. and only people that are really stuck, you know, in really tough times have other issues typically, yeah. you know, that they're trying to trying to work through as well. So like, we're, we're so lucky. So it, lucky. Doesn't, it doesn't mean you, you, you have everything, but you, you, you certainly have a, a, a life yeah. and you're not um, fighting for safety that's uh, often. That, that's yeah. it, that's yeah. it. It's not like you're going to end up on the street like yep. i mean if like that's what the worst like doomsday yep. worst case scenario if all else fails like that's a really nice yep. safety net that a luxurious safety net that many other people yep. across the world are not afforded but if you've got a family unit friends people around you there, there's always going to be a way that's it and but we do we, we just think it it's it's we take it like this is an enormous decision that literally becomes life and death that's it's, it. and it's so far from that's that it. Yeah. And then there's also the other, you know, the psychological parts of it of like, <laughs> oh, what if my, what are my friends going to think of me if I fail or yeah. like whatever. And then you've just got to remove that as well. It's just like, you know, they they're going to be if they're your friends, they're going to be like in your corner rooting for you. Yeah. You know, like it's it doesn't matter. The only person that really cares about you failing is you. Awesome. So, you so get over it. <laughs> so how do you start then? You know, you've spoken to Nick, you've spoken to your dad. Systems go. I mean, I guess you're already consulting a little bit, so you sort of have the idea. You just that need, was kind to, of my you just need right? to scale it up, right? Yeah. And figure out how to take it to the next level. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I, um, I was really lucky. Uh, my uh, old boss, uh, my, the last boss that I ever had, Brendan. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Brendan. What's up? Um, so, I was uh, the head of digital at his business and um, just really honest. And I sat him down because literally, like, what I was about to do was start a competing business in the same locality as his business, yeah. right? Like, yeah. You know, so, um, you know, I, we had a really, really great relationship. The story gets even better. So we had a really, really great relationship and um, I'm all about honesty and transparency. So I sat him down the second that I decided that I was going to do this. Uh, I think it was in, I incorporated my company on the 24th of July, 2015, the day before my birthday. Um, but two, a month and a half earlier when I was getting everything ready and stuff, um, I sat down with Brendan and I was like, hey bro, got to have a chat. This is what I'm planning on doing. I... I'm extending this, I don't even know what the word is, but I'm, I'm not olive branch, but I'm just letting you know I'm being transparent yeah. because I understand that one, this is technically a breach of my uh, employment contract. 
<laughs> Two, I don't want to leave you high. I'm not going to take any clients, but I want to yeah. leave you high and dry. Yeah. And, you know, fuck your business over because you've done, he did, he's done so much for me. I'm eternally grateful to him. Yep. And I want to make this transition process easy for all of us, but also I'm not going to not do what I want to do. You know, mm. like it's what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I trusted in the relationship and I trusted that he'd be supportive. And, you know, he was. Um, <laughs> fast forward. So, like, I, my last day was the 10th of September. Um, yeah, quit quit working full time for someone else properly uh, on the 10th of September of 2015. And I started working full time uh, the following week on my own business. And then a month later, Brendan and I moved in together. <laughs> True story. <laughs> we didn't know each other before he employed me. Uh, we just came really close at work. And um, yeah, it's so like you can start a competing. <laughs> I'm not saying this is <laughs> this is kosher, but you can. It goes to show if you can build. In my experience, anyway, if you build really great relationships with people and you build trust, and everything's okay. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> the story does. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> That's unusual. Yeah. That really is unusual. Because uh, I mean, but the thing is, you took the. You took the high road as well. You took the longer term approach. I mean, you see so many people just quickly cut and run in a situation. It's not even that they necessarily got bad values or a bad person, but they just think really short term. I'm, oh, I need to do this. I'm not going to overly think about yeah. my other people and other commitments. And it just, especially in a little little town yeah. of Perth, yeah. you know, we're a tiny little place. You do one thing, you know, that that sort of does burn someone or hurt yeah. someone. And it doesn't help. And you know, I'm firmly of the view there's so much work out there. Really, there's like so much there's work. so much work. There's so many of you know us. We do much the same thing, probably in a lot of different ways. But yeah. we do, you know, we do similar things for similar types of clients. You know, we're talking to each other. There's there's, there's there's so many other businesses yeah. out there doing a lot as well. I mean, we're we're, we're a small business nation. Yeah, that's right. And up. you know, people that help small businesses and uh, you know get involved in it all. But we cross over everywhere. That's I mean, you it. talk about Nick Bowditch. Yep, I, I don't get Nick Bowditch. Like, and he's in he's in the other other side of Australia. So yeah. it just it's a um yeah. You just can't you can't do things short term. That's it. And you just took the right approach. And then and you know, I was full. He, on he ready, trusts like, you enough to live with you, right? Well, yeah, straight up, straight up. And um, you know, like and. I wouldn't have lived with him, with him if he was my boss, but you know, we were, you know, we were, cause we were really close friends. Yeah. Um, you know, I just happened to work for him and you know, once I stopped working for him, it was kind of like we both needed somewhere to live. So it was just, it made, it just made sense yeah. and it was awesome. Um, so, and the other thing as well, when I walked into that meeting, like I'd fully decided like, okay, this meeting's either going to go like one of two ways. Mm-hmm. One, it's going to go how I'm hoping it goes, which is how it went. Or two, yeah. I'm, I'm getting walked the fuck out. Yeah. And I'm, Otherwise, I'm, you're, I'm, you're I'm, gone I'm, now. Yeah, I'm gone now. <laughs> like, I'm gonna, I had a bit of money saved in the bank account. I was like, cool. Was like, I'd, I'd already budgeted, like crisis, yeah. like, you know, worst case scenario budgeted for that um, that scenario. But at the end of the day, I was like, morally, this is the right thing to do. This mm. is like what's in line with my ethics, my values. If he's not cool with it, that's, that's totally fine. Like, it's all good. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, it's his prerogative. But uh-huh. as long as I, for me, it's always like as long as you can fall asleep at the end of the night knowing that you conduct yourself in line with like what you morally stand for. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> so how long did you live together? Uh, we lived together for a year and a bit. And yeah. then uh, we both moved into our own places after that. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Good, Good story. Times. Good times. Yeah. And so Ramondo Media was born. Ramondo Media was born. And then uh, so was my crazy 80 plus hour work weeks grind <laughs> for... I don't work that hard these days anymore, mainly because mental health and like I learned the hard way that you can only burn the candle at both ends for so long without crashing and burning. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the first, I, I think I'm just a sucker for pain, right? Like I still romanticize with the, the struggle of that first year and a half because I, I just work my face off. But I, I would kill for that energy and that like, just burning desire, like do or die. You know what I mean? Not that I don't have it anymore, but like yeah. not to the level. But not to the same level, right? And you look like, back and you're like, oh, how could I? Yeah. I, I can't, like, because it's not sustainable. Like, no, dude, it's oh, so, no, it's so far hell from no. sustainable. When, when something's fresh and new, you just, you just find a way, like every minute, right? That's it. And you just cut sleep back. You do whatever you, whatever you need to do, and you still do elements of it, right? But just nowhere near to the same extent. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And I've got, you know, you. you become more efficient yeah, and smarter your processes set up. But you, like you would, you know, you're setting up like a business you yeah. and do everything, you yeah. know? And that's where my, I guess, and I shit all over my accounting degree, but fuck, I tell you what, mate, having an accounting background when I started a business and I was like, oh, ha, huh, balance sheets. <laughs> that's what this is for. Ha, huh, accounts payable. I can sync this up with my credit cards and automate all the payments and know how everything works. This is awesome. I often under, like, I undersell that sometimes. Like, I, I look at other people that starting businesses fresh and I think, shit, 
you you haven't got that. Like whereas I I learned that you you learned some of that as well. It's 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 fundamental to business. A lot of accountants make great business owners for for that exact reason. I mean, learning that on the job is tough. Yeah, and like and you don't have time. <laughs> I mean, you're spending eighty hours a week already doing everything else, let alone trying to figure out what that means. Or I can't imagine not being able to look at a P and L profit and loss whatever they call it now and i was just yeah, yeah. Name it, whatever i can't i can't imagine being not being able to look at that and have an understanding of what's going on That's i mean it. a lot of business owners fly blind yeah really just and they just know their craft and they're pushing that along and it, that would be intense like yeah just, i thought it's i mean it's hard enough right yeah I mean, straight up and like yeah. you know i didn't know how to use zero like the accounting software that i yeah. use but um i worked it out pretty fast yeah. mainly because of the account the fundamental accounting background that i had mm. and i yeah i uh I remember walking out of my final ever accounting exam. It was, um, fuck, what was it for? I think it was for audit. Oh, I hated that unit. <laughs> I walked out of that exam and I was like, I'm fucking done. I'm so done. I'm never doing it. I'm never, like I literally said to myself as I walked out, I was just overcome with euphoria. I was like, I'm never doing accounting ever again, ever. <laughs> and then I started my business and I just had to be like, I had to just, just swallow. And now I do accounting. Swallow that. I was like. <laughs> And then my parents always laugh at me about it. They're like, oh, I'm glad you did that accounting degree. Hey, Paul. Hey, hey. I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but, but dude, zero is gold. Like, I, 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 was, uh, you know, I was doing stuff before then, like Myob and like, the more offline versions. Like we had, to, we had to manually type every damn thing in. Like zero is incredible. Like, so it's, good. It, you, you don't actually have to do much else. Like it does a lot automatically. And depending on how your business is structured and what goes on, oh, mate, that, that, that's a game changer for Straight small up. business. Yeah, Straight up. so good. Zero is amazing. Plus you can plug it into a lot of third-party apps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I plug mine into Invoice Sherpa to collect yep. invoices. Um, then I've got all my, you know, the business, everything uh, on th I run my business, through, everything in my business is run through, expenses run through credit cards. Yep. And then everything's just, the bank feeds are dripped in automatically. Yeah. And then the zero learns what, how to classify transactions yeah. if you've got repeating transactions. It's so good. It's just done. And it's then my bookkeeper takes care of the rest. Click, 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 yep. click, 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 click. That's it. And oh, it used to be so much more brutal. Like even just the automatic transactions. Yeah. Man. Used to come through, someone, what, your bookkeeper would type one mistake. And then you'd be spending hours trying to find that, like that Straight sense up. change. Straight up. I'm like, now it's just auto, it's in there, it's just That's incredible. It, it, change, it changes everyone's life, I think. That's it. <laughs> Plus with source transactions, like I'm getting technical, but yeah. so um, with source documents, like if I, if I make a bit, like let's say I'm out for a coffee or I make whatever a business expense, and, you know, you've got to take the photo of the receipt. I literally just upload it to my Xero app yeah. in my phone. And then that just, my bookkeeper syncs that up with the yeah. transaction, my credit card, yeah. done. Yeah, it's so good. Love it. Anyway, I could probably talk anyway. about that for a while, but yeah. it's just, which is ironic. I mean, I don't, no, I I don't that's get... helpful. I mean, people listening, um, like if you don't know, you don't know. No, you, you don't. It's like sharing. Yeah, it's so good. I don't like. I don't like really talking about accounting very much, but that's well, one thing here, I do here, talk here. about. Yeah, here we are. Here, here I am. Let's talk about some accounting. <laughs> so awesome. So anyway, Ramondo Media. Um, I we know where you're at now. I won't. I won't go any further. But so. Uh, flipping into digital marketing at the moment. Uh, what do you? What do you think that businesses? What's, what's one of the key things you see them doing wrong at the moment? Hmm. So many things. <laughs> um, like, okay. <laughs> Misunderstanding the platform in which they're telling a story on. Yeah. Um, you know, the, and this, a lot of what I'm trying, I'm trying to think of new things that aren't just the, you know, the normal yeah. kind of stereotypical answers to this question, but, you know, like disrespecting the platform in which you're, running content on, running content on the platform incorrectly. If you want to go more micro into that, like not understanding the subtle nuances between how you communicate in different platforms. Um, if you're running stuff on Facebook, for example, like you can't be running shit, like can't running content with more than 20% text in the ads. Like if you are, and if you're paying for it, you're just wasting money because you're going to, your reach is going to get decreased and like you're going to pay more money for it. Mm. Um, and that hurts me because I'm like, you can get so much more reach and get so many more leads or whatever your overarching goal is at a lower cost if you just did it right. Um, yeah, those are Facebook, Facebook ads, my, my jam. That's one of my biggest, uh, biggest pet peeves. Mm. Just not because it's like I'm elitist. I'm like, no, you're doing it wrong. My way is the right way. It's literally just like. Well, it's ROI, right? At the end of the it's day, it's ROI. It comes down you're to ROI. money and it hurts, yeah. especially for small businesses. It's like, yeah. fuck. You don't know what you don't know. No, that and that's probably the biggest con like that. Well, not concerned, but that's the hardest part, right? That you don't know, and they don't know, typically. And so you see it, you see it happening, and you see epic amounts of money clearly being wasted, and you sort of go, oh, you could just do so much more yeah. and reach so much further that's with it. that, you know. So. That and um, more technically, not not doing your basic. Um, 
like having no data hygiene, right? Like not doing conversion tracking, not yeah. setting your pixels up oh. correctly or setting them up <laughs> at all, not doing UTM tagging with your um, with all your links, like if you're spending money and especially if e-commerce, even if it's just leads, like you really should be tracking how much it's costing you to generate those leads and knowing what your return is, which is one of the great thing about things about digital as well is you can track everything. You can. You know, it's, it's, not, just, it's not based off it's not based off Nelson's metric reporting on oh, I just stood here and yep, there's about ten thousand people to see this ad space at this time. Cool. There's your uh, there's your CPM. Where you go. I know, which is still seen as um, almost superior in many ways, but yeah. it's just that, yeah. That's I mean right. they, just, they all have their place. They, they have their they, place. They like, do. But the granu- the granularity and the fact that anyone can play and have a really winning shot. You don't need five thousand to ten thousand dollars to run a wicked billboard. No to generate you some leads like you can yep. spend 200 bucks and you just got to do the work that's the problem there's, there's work in it right and i don't even mean epic you just got to think about it you got to logically go through the steps because most of it there's a lot of common sense in all yep. of it right and you can understand and even when people backlash a lot when facebook changes this or that like hang on think about it yeah think about what they're doing and why yeah it makes sense you actually want them to implement these difficult changes at yep. times because other it means it's the longevity of the platform that's it. it's giving the the users what they want which in turn allows you to communicate with them that's there, it. right that's the thing i know I, this complaining business doesn't work it's I just know. like just keep just, just keep adapt. adjusting just keep adapt. adapting right adapt so. die. and the other thing as well i'll say on that is um uh i think this is my biggest not biggest pet peeve but i guess uh, frustration uh is just you unless you are your target market you're not your target market yeah right so you can't emotionally attach as a business owner you can't emotionally attach your perceived you know, benefits or your attitude or your emotions to whatever it is that you're selling because you're most more, more likely than not, not your target market. Mm. So what you may think not may not be good because that's your frame on it may actually be perfect for who your target audience is and yeah. vice versa. And sometimes you just don't know, right? Well, that's sometimes why you, you think test. you put out, you put out, you think you're putting out the best piece of content, and then no one will touch it, and then vice versa. Something like you think, oh, okay, that's not what we really wanted to get out there. You put it out there, people, people engage. It's that's just, it. You know, it's just you, you can't. The beauty of it is, it's all there's all the data, it's all there, that's it. and you can really dig as deep as you want. That's it. You know, into it all, and that's that's a bit that I think just throws people as they just get overwhelmed with. It, the marketing 101 stuff that we were taught, you know, five years ago, that was taught 20 years ago. You just got to match that stuff with all the new, like the new tools and techniques and tactics. 100%. People, I think they think all that, that history is gone. It's still there. Yeah, Ogilvy's still there. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's all real. It's yeah. just that you got to think about, you know, applying it to these different mediums. Yeah, same shit, different platform. That's it. Right. Whether it's a newspaper or whatever, 50 years yeah, ago, it's the it. same as Facebook. You just got to figure it out. So, that's and it. try and test, right? Because yeah. you never know. And but it, uh, also on that as well, like I spend a bunch of time designing really sexy ads or creating really awesome micro content. I'm like, yeah, this is so sick. I'm going, <laughs> this is going to do so well. And then I'll split test it, um, you know, A-B test, like one version versus another, or yep. I go super granular, so I'll probably do four or five, but yep. I'm, I'm weird. Um, no. <laughs> it's nerd life, nerd life. Um, and then the shittest piece of content, in my opinion, yeah. I'm complete, always humble, humbling myself yeah. every single day. I'm like, this is going to be so sick. And then the shittest piece of content or the shittest ad or the shittest copy or the shittiest headline yeah. is one that converts the best. And I'm like, well, data's king. Uh, yeah. I'm wrong no, no. again. The amount of head shakes that we yeah. um, you know, we do in here as well. Yeah. Just like, really? Yeah. Is that what happened? And um, But yeah, I find... Yeah, you just that, that's the beauty of it. I mean, imagine imagine doing this 50 years ago where you didn't have those numbers and you couldn't really that's track. It. Like, you just wouldn't know. And egos would override because 100%. they would be like, no, I'm right. That's it. And it's like, well, they've got no data to prove it. And you know, apart from a few people um, filling out some information, you know, which just doesn't give you any real result. Yep. But um, yeah, cool. So... Where's, where are you going? Where's the business going in the next five years? What's the vision for you? Are you staying in Perth? Are you, are you moving on? Are you, you know, where, does, where does Ramondo Media look? What does it look like in five years? Um, so that's a really good question. And it's, uh, <laughs> so I've always been like, I must set all my goals and must set all my smart goals and achieve them. And um, this year for the first time, I just, like I was saying, mentioned before, like burden by choice, right? Yeah. There's so many things that I want to do yeah. and could do and so many places that I want to live and stuff that I want to do yep. um, that, you know, what's it today? It's the 23rd of January and Paul Raimondo still hasn't done <laughs> his goal planning for the rest of the year. It's on the list still. By the end of January, I'll get it done. That's the goal at the moment. Get my goal planning done by the end of the year um, or end of this 
Hey, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, I digress. I'm getting I'm getting anxiety just thinking it's about all right. it. right. You'll get it yeah. done. Don't worry. I'm actually in a similar boat. I'm about 80% through it, but I'm, I've got a lot of anxiety because yep. I'm like, hang on. <laughs> January's nearly done. Yep. And I, we normally sit down. Like I sit down with my wife. We go through it all. We actually do a lot you know, do a lot of planning. That's awesome. But not having it finished is uh, eating at me. So yep. don't worry. You will get it done. Yeah, no. Because that's I who you are. Yeah, yeah straight <laughs> up. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Matt. Um, but yeah, so... Um, I think the biggest, uh, and I've already started working on this, um, the biggest goal for me this year is to do a lot more speaking. Yep. It's one of the favorite things that right. I get to do. Um, so yeah, doing a lot more speaking, speaking a lot more conferences. That makes sense, yep. yep. Um, <laughs> need some caffeine. Um, yeah, speaking a lot more conferences. Um, going to relaunch my online course, Funnels 101. Quick plug, anyone? No. Um, do that, and I think if I can muster up the time, I want to build a Facebook ads course as well, okay. um, which would be sick. Um, and then uh, in terms of modern media, um, I want to start, I, for the longest amount of time, I haven't really wanted to build uh, an agency. And now I'm kind of at the point where I don't particularly want to build an agency in the traditional model of building an agency, but I would really yeah. love to have an awesome team around me. Yep. Um, so I can create way more content, which is my favorite thing to do. Yep. Um, do way more vlogs, um, uh, become more of an influencer online in the digital marketing space. Um, cause at the moment it's just, uh, it's what's the word? Um, it's the, you know, I'm trying, trying to, to stuff something. Big no, no, no. <laughs> um, it's a, it's a bottleneck. That's it. Yeah, I've right. got all this stuff yeah. that I want to do. I yeah. just don't have the, you know, which is my own fault, which is totally fine. Um, but I just don't have the internal resources to be able to do it. Yeah. So this year, the goal is to make absolutely no money and just reinvest it just all into the business and um, yeah, build a team build a team, build a wicked culture. Yeah. When I come to work, just like, what's up? Let's, let's hang out. Let's do just this whole nerd out and just like, oh, look, split test this and that's a shit ad and, you know, that kind of that kind of vibe. It makes um, a difference, man. Like, yeah, just changes up. everything, like, about the workplace. If you can just have a bit of fun there and some good people. That's it. Just figure it out together, you know. That's, that's it. It's awesome. Yeah, so that's kind of the, that's the, that's the kind of loose goal at yep. the moment. Um, and also do a lot more vlogging. Um, yep. That's... Uh, which is really time time. Well, it does lead into my next question. Yeah, I, so, thought, I thought there'd be a little bridge there. So um, it looks pretty easy, right? Like, you know, I'm blogging. sure it sure oh, takes so, you. Know, it takes five so ten easy. minutes yeah, to put no, a vlog just, together. Yeah, just use a little app on my phone and done. Just where you go. Yeah, it's not weird talking to yourself with a big camera in public. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, not weird at all. Um, we try have a guy, having a guy walk around with you, like as if, well, as if like, I'm Brad Pitt or something. No, that's so much easier though. Like people, like it's all in your own head as well. And people yeah. are going to look at you like you're an yeah. idiot regardless. Cause it's a weird thing to do. Right. I, yeah. I didn't vlog today cause I was running late, but you know, if you see my camera, it's like on this big, you know, um, yeah. gorilla pod stick and it's a big camera. You carry a big um, camera. I mean, like if I'm ever doing anything, it's this little guy. Yeah. But you've, you've got a serious, yeah, it's no, it's nowhere near as big as that yeah, one. No. That, that is a beast. Like that is, that is goals right there. Could, man, yeah. Imagine vlogging on that. It'd be so dope. Oh. <laughs> it's Andrew's heavy. got the goods. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's a, it's, oh, I can't even remember what I was talking about. I got distracted talking about how big Andrew's camera is. <laughs> um, so <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, and no, I'm completely, you're going to have to bring me back on. I'm off. What was um, we talking about? No, we were talking about, I was saying it looked pretty easy. Uh, yeah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the thing is though, like it's um, creatively, it's really challenging. Yeah. Um, and I love telling stories. And I love learning new things. And I found that um, I find that if I'm not learning or cre- that if I don't get to create something in a day, then I don't really have much fulfillment. It sounds weird. I don't really get much fulfillment from that day because I haven't created something yep. or if I haven't learned something new and something that I'm interested in. Yep. Um, then I feel like it's not a waste of a day, but I just feel like, oh, that was a bit, could have done better that day. But and when you're in a, you know, but, sorry to cut you off, right, but like right. when you're in that zone, that, that's where you chew time. Because you're so interested in it, yep. That's is that it. and then you'll burn like way too many hours on trying to trying to figure that out or something out that you know like I've, we I vlog a little bit, not much. I obviously, get some help. It gets cut up. It's nowhere near as complex as what I see you put out, right? And I'm I'm looking at it going, wow. Like, I'm, and <laughs> I know you. you do at least the bulk of it yourself, if not all of it. I yeah, think, pretty much. Pretty yeah, much. All so of it. I'm looking unless at I'm getting it, someone to help me film. That's what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, anyway, sorry, that's right. gone. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at it going, oh, you know, I, I can see the time, like, because I yeah. I get it, and then especially if you're learning elements as you go. Well, that's which it. is great, but like, wow, like the time suck is. And huge. I didn't know how to do any of it. Yeah. At all. Like yeah. I started vlogging in February last year. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd been down the YouTube route. I love YouTube. Oh, I love YouTube. Um, but I was down the YouTube rabbit hole like hard and I was like, I really want to do this. And then it'd be really cool to do for my personal brand, but also be really cool to just as a creative outlet for me beyond yeah. everything else that I do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I had the Adobe creative suite just cause Photoshop and illustrator for designing ads and basically just taught myself how to film and how to edit 
and how to color grade and how to do effects. And I made it my goal every single, and it was, you know, the first episode, I look back at that. I look at the first episode, not to toot my own horn, but I had never done any of it before, right? Except the animation to throw back to the early conversation. Like I understand how timelines worked and, you know, that kind of thing. And I watched a bunch of tutorials on YouTube in terms of storytelling. But apart from that, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm flying blind, blind, right? And that at first edit would have been like 35 hours worth, right? Like it's crazy, but I had so much fun doing it. And I was like, cool, next vlog, I'll learn a new skill. Mm -hmm. And oh, next vlog of that, I'll do something new. And then every single vlog, I just try to outdo myself. And at the same time, uh, for anyone wanting to start a vlog, um, the same time I'm templating every single vlog as, is every single vlog is a templated iteration of the previous vlog. Yep. So things get far, your workflow gets faster and faster and faster and faster because you've yep. got all these templated sequences. You've got yep. a templated intro, you've got templated pop tags, like sound effects, all that kind of stuff. So now my workflow in terms of idea, filming, upload, edit, render, yep. it's just way faster. Yep. Um, and going back to what I was saying before, it's way easier. I find it way easier vlogging in public or just vlogging in general when I don't have to think about it. Yeah. Because when you vlog selfie vlogging, there's so much other stuff going on. You're like, okay, what's the story? What's the purpose of this content? How's this scene fitting into the story that I'm trying to tell? Because if you don't plan, in my experience, if you don't plan the story out, it makes your edit times take so much longer because mm. I've done days where I filmed so, so, so much content and there's so much gold, but then you have to go through and watch five hours worth of your own content. And even if you're Figure doing it on out. four times speed, it's like, it's just a, it's a mind fuck. It's so, and you get nothing done and then you're just like, I've wasted so much time. Anyway, I digress. Um, but if you have a story or if you have someone filming you, I find it a lot easier because they're focusing on making it look sexy and making sure you're in focus and then you can just focus on telling the story. Mm. Um, Oh, you're right. Yeah. I mean, I, that's why I couldn't do what you're doing. Like, you know, I mean, I could, but yeah. I just finding that time, like I just certainly, I'd, I'd love to learn a bit more how to edit, do those sort of things, but there's, there's, there's no time right now to do that. 100%. Although the, the creativity and what like you talk about, like I'd love to just jump down the rabbit hole there and figure some of that stuff out. And I've, yeah. I've done that type of thing, you know, throughout my life when yeah. I've got interested in something, right? Just figure it out. And that's, I think, what a lot of business owners yeah, do as well, right? Uh, and, but, that's, um, and that's, uh, and within that, I learned a really great lesson. Like I had to, I had to have, part of my, I didn't have the intervention with myself. It was kind of, that's why masterminds are great, right? So the, one of the master, oh, I'm only part of one mastermind, the mastermind that I'm part of, a <laughs> um, f- bunch of great, a uh, g- bunch of great dudes, shout out to the SEM mastermind. Um, basically one of, um, one of the, you know, my colleagues or peers in that uh, mastermind group was saying um, how he was prioritizing fun work mm. a la blogging yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and adding the same amount of, you know, deadline and importance to as what all your other work is, right? Yeah. Except like you just you're just tricking yourself because it's not ROA positive one. It's more of a hobby if you're really honest with yourself. It's like yeah. it's like I've got like a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Back then it was like I had three hundred subscribers on YouTube. Like and I'm making like I got an ads I got AdSense today, but like three hundred dollars from Google AdSense from all my websites plus my pre roll and mid roll. <laughs> like like it's not RI positive. It, it's a hobby, Paul. Like yeah. just, it's a hobby. Um, so he was talking about that and I was like, oh, oh shit. Yep. I, you know, I'm spending, spending, you know, the Saturday and the Saturday, so that's fine. But I'll spend my Saturdays editing and then, you know, Tuesday morning, six hours and Tuesday morning and then cutting up micro content. And then I'm like, what, it's like 18 hours and it's fun as fuck, but it's, <laughs> Paul, you got a business to run, bro. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? So that's kind of why I'd like, pulled back a lot with the vlogs um, last year, uh, even though I really want to get one out every week. Just, yeah, you know, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why it hasn't been one out this year yet because yeah. it just, I can't even get my goal planning done, let alone like trying to do a vlog every <laughs> week, which is one of the goals that's going to be on my list, you know? like. But yeah, it's uh, it's finding that fine line bet- and having the discipline, right? Yeah. Having the discipline to be like, okay, this is fun. So if you want to do it, this is coming out of your fun time. No Netflix for you. You want to edit videos? You can edit videos. One or the other. You can't be both. <laughs> It's a super point. And I think, you know, my next sort of question was to you and we'll, we'll sort of get into this. How, how has it driven results for your business? And I like certainly the podcast and some, I mean, some of, some of the video work we've done has been useful, certainly at a, at a branding level. And I, like, I, I believe it's super ROI positive, but I believe it can't be measured yet. And I think it's like over time in particular, but like, how do you, how do you perceive that then? Cause I, I agree in, in some, in some ways it is, a, it is a hobby. However, I think it does drive some level of business results. It depends what you're doing, yeah. but um, the ROI, the data is not there in yeah. a lot of ways. Like, cause yeah. the data you get is great, but it's around engagement and other things. Like yeah. there's some, some lead generation can come from it, but a lot of it, someone might've just heard about you. They consume some content and then that's why they've then got the, you know, you've built that, 
you know, key person, you know, key person in the marketplace from that, they're like, wow, you're an influencer. Great. Yeah. Cool. I want to talk to you. Yeah. You can't, you can't match that up sometimes. Yeah. You really just can't, well, can't do that. No. And so what do you think, what do you think it's done for your brand? Yeah. Um, vlogging. And so, and would you, would you recommend it to people? Um, what's both. Two. All right. Good, good questions. Um, yeah, no measurable ROI. I mean, if I was to tangibly measure the return on investment, it would be in the negative 10,000%. Yeah, because right? of the time that you yeah, put yeah, in and the money yeah. spent on equipment and everything oh, straight else. straight up. Yeah. You know, like I've spent... A, and, you know, again, hobby, right? And yep. it's how you look at it. Like yep. if I was to granularly look at it as a business, uh, micro business within inside my business, yep. I'd probably lost like it's negative, probably not even, no hyperbole, like negative 15,000%. Yep. Like in terms of time, like yep. you apportion a value in your time how much money could I make or how much could I charge out of billable hours of client work could I have gotten in return for that? Keep in mind, I'm turning away a lot of leads because I just don't have the capacity uh, yep. to take on new business. Yep. And also like, I want to be able to have to spend time vlogging, right? Yep. So, but that's like a personal choice and whatever um, about the emotional utility that we we're talking about earlier. But yeah, if I was to think of the return on investment, like I said, $300 worth of AdSense last quarter, um, actually running Facebook ads, retargeting uh, Facebook orientated vlogs that I've done uh, and retargeting cold members of my audience um, that have only just seen one Facebook vlog with one of my eBooks. It's like six ninety nine US, which works out to be depending on the exchange rate, you know, eight, nine, ten dollars yep. Australian. Um, making it wicked, like within that, in that small. If you just look at that, like under the lens, yeah, um, you know, making a decent return on investment, yep. making ten dollars on like you know two dollar ad spend, not bad. Like, but. Like, come on, no, it's, it's not an ROI positive thing. But however, um, in terms of equity in my brand, mm -hmm. it's, I think it, not, I think, I know that it definitely nurtures equity in my brand, yep. um, beyond all of the, you know, warm and fuzzies and I enjoy doing it. It makes me feel good. Um, in terms of equity, it builds a lot of equity in the nurture. If you think about mm -hmm. it from, as, from a funnel perspective, from the nurture part of your, uh, your funnel. You've got people coming in through to your website, you know, whether you're running Facebook ads or Google AdWords or SEO, however they get into your website, and then you're retargeting them with either on Facebook with your vlog um, relative and the vlog content being relative to the specific pages they've viewed in their web on your website. Yep. Your equity and authority goes up a lot higher, mm -hmm. like a lot higher than any other, you know, person that you're competing against and then it comes down to how good's your content and then the very then that's the variable of your, you know your success but the joke for me is like i'm not doing any of it to generate leads like mm -hmm. at all like oh cool i want to do some ebook sales the only reason i'm doing that is i want to work out what works because i'm just a nerd for data because i'm like i can use that lessons that i learn on my brand and then apply it to my clients and get them wicked results right um so for me it's just all passion and fun at this point in time mm -hmm. um yeah long term there's there'll be other, some other stuff going on but Vlogging specifically for me from a return on investment uh, point of view. I mean, I would I would love to be a full-time YouTuber. That'd be sick. That would be sick. Get a civil play button, work my way out to a gold one. Shout out, Casey. Yeah, what up, Casey? Australia's Casey. <laughs> Fucking love Casey. <laughs> Casey, nice that, everyone. My hero. <laughs> but brilliant, right? He's like, just the best. The creative. Like, I mean, just the best. obviously, both, we're both Gary Vee fans. And what Gary, Gary is, is amazing. But Casey's got the creativity. Like, he puts just... The amount of effort that goes, sorry, sorry, shout out Dear Roku, yeah, yeah, et cetera, et cetera, Bab, and who also put a lot of effort into their, you know, into what goes out for Gary. But Casey just is, is more creation yeah. and then really just builds some amazing stuff. And um, yeah, uh, I, uh, you're more down that line. I can see you wanting to just create just yeah, amazing 100%. videos over and 100%. over. And but a full time fun. YouTuber would be nice. Oh, it would be, it would be really, really <laughs> sick. Yeah. Um, to answer the second part of your question, would you recommend doing it? 100%. Yeah. Especially like, if you've got a specific goal behind it, like our video content's amazing. Yeah. Like, um, and it doesn't have to be like as wanky as my content is like, you know, I spend a lot of time on it, like I said before, because I enjoy doing it. Like yeah. it's fun to do. Yeah. Um, but you don't, it doesn't have to be like a work of art. I'm not saying my stuff's a work of art at all. There's a lot that I can improve on, but like, you seen the selfie camera on these things like the iphone 10s yeah. like they're amazing yeah. they're so good and the 4k on the back end like you've got you know I'm, this is just so many people preach about this but if you want to create video content for your business or you want to vlog like pick up your cell phone and just start doing it you just Don't, gotta because you gotta start there and that's yeah. the thing i like you know but we i guess both of us know okay it's easy to say very very hard to do even actually if you're quite passionate about it and you really want to get it done oh, so, it's weird it's not like, natural it, it's it's, it's not. not it's not natural I and try, you've got I've to break through it and if, if, like 
I've been vlogging for a year now, right? And before that, I was doing daily stuff and like daily digital marketing tips on Snapchat, like yep. super meta. Yeah, I remember like, those. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. You watch them. That's my vlog. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> um, so that like doing stuff on Snapchat initially, that was what allowed me yeah. to kind of get comfortable in front of the camera. Yeah. Fuck, man. I um I went back in my archives like middle of last year, and I found the fir- one of the first of a Facebook or like social media marketing videos that I did. This is before I started my business and it's just cringeworthy to the extreme. Oh. I'm like, who is this dickhead? Um, I just couldn't like, th- I made myself watch it. I was like, look how far you've come. Be proud of yourself. Um, but it just reminded me like you, everyone starts somewhere. If it's not going to be perfect, like it's, it's just going to, you just got to keep doing it. And I haven't vlogged in about a month now and I tried to do an intro because I was going to film a vlog for today because I was like, I need to get back on the vlog wagon. And... <laughs> Like nothing, yeah. just oh. just shooting shooting blanks. Like, what am I what am I talking about? I'm getting weird. I'm just by myself in my studio, getting weird in front of the camera. I'm yeah. like, I feel it. No, it's no, I weird. get it. The minute you don't do natural. it for a little while, and you're like, whoa, because you, yeah, it's not natural unless you've done a lot of it, right? But the the really crazy thing about that, I'm holding a phone up. <laughs> yeah. For those listening, it it doesn't go live. Like you can you can film hours and hours yeah. and practice and do whatever yeah. you like. Like, but people are just so fearful of it. You yeah. know, I think, and I, you know. Myself included at some point, but I I was driven to do it. I just knew I wanted yeah. to. It was like, and there was, there was some, I just had to overcome it. It was yeah. it was something I wanted, and certainly like this is another medium podcasting where we're creating some audio now. There's also video going on yeah. and all that, but it's a you have to. Uh, I love it. We've been talking for a long time, and we'll probably talk a bit longer. We're but gonna keep going. It's going deeper. A lot of people do 15 minute podcasts. That's cool. Yeah. Like get your point out, do what you need to do. Like it doesn't have to be a huge time suck and it doesn't have to be like as deep. Like your vlogs are great, man. You put a lot of effort I into it. I can that. really Thank see you. that. Like I, I really enjoy you. Like we, we, we don't have, the, I don't have the time to even move towards yeah. that zone. You know what I mean? I can see some of the planning in there. Yeah. Not yeah. there. But like I'm, I'm happy that we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. And there's, there was a level earlier on that it was even worse. And yeah. But you've got to start. Yeah, Otherwise you're up. never going to get up there, right? Up. You've got to get there somewhere. So, but uh, yeah, anyone listening. doing one minute, you know, like one to two minute pieces of micro content That's for it. Facebook. Like and, s- and you can square really 1080 do it. by 1080, like yeah. what, whatever your field is, yeah. like your insurance broker. Yeah, cool. and don't even intro can, and outro. Just, like, just, just like don't don't do make it, it hard, it. or just we, make it utility. Like yeah. you don't even make it entertaining. Just make it utility, and people just people be interested. We're just providing value. Just, yeah, we overcomplicate it. We do. Like, we do. We, we, we need. Oh, but I can't do it. I haven't got the expensive gear. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I've, I've been down that rabbit hole. Let me yeah. tell you. Like, well, it's fun having nice gear is fun, but yeah. like. That was a big, big little... That's one of the reasons that stopped me from like... Before I started vlogging properly in February last year, I tried to start vlogging in the July the year before. And yeah. I started... It yeah. was, that was even worse. But like, yeah. I just slowly worked myself up to it. Yeah. And just keep in mind that when you get in front of the camera, it's not a natural thing. No. It's weird. you got to try. until you get comfortable. Even like me on camera, like, um, you know, I mean, we know each other, uh, you know, in real life. And I always try to be the... Uh, as authentic as I can beh- like in front of the camera or, you know, even on a podcast or whatever. I'm just, actually, I'm just being me at the moment. But so There's still cameras on it. Yeah, yeah, there's still cameras. <laughs> but it's not It's not like, hey, what's up? It's Paul Ramondo. What's Dolce? Rah, rah. Like, like right. I play a caricature of myself and that's yeah. very much on purpose because you need to make stuff engaging and you need, if I want people to, like, actually watch my content all the way through and build an audience, like... I'm gonna be a bit more. I'm pretty eccentric, regardless. But I'm a bit. I turn up my volume, my personality to 12 out of 10, as opposed to 10. And doesn't make it inauthentic, right? That's no, the thing. It's no. still authentic. Yeah. Like it's definitely anyone that knows you. It is you. Yeah, it is it's me. It's just, just me. You. Way more hectic. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it is hectic. It's the right word yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Which is pretty good because I'm gonna. But <laughs> leads into my next question. So Perfect. Where does that inner drive come from? I mean, you you, oh, you are man, pretty hectic. Old man Ramondo. <laughs> okay. Old man Ramondo. Mum and dad. My parents are the best. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, they, everything it all comes back from mum and dad. Yeah. Um, they taught me the value of if you, you want something, you go, you go fucking work for it. Yeah. Um, I never, you know, like mum and dad always met me halfway with everything, but they, they just did the best job. I just love them so much. They, mm-hmm. they taught me the value of like working hard and work ethic and also taking responsibilities for your mistakes. Yeah. Like I worked at a bakery for 10 years. Um, <laughs> this is funny. Um, so I worked at a bakery for 10 years. Um, every single weekend and after school, uh, up until I started my career in social. And um, the reason I started working at the bakery when I was 13 was because I wanted to buy a laptop. And I, I worked at that bakery every Sunday earning sweet fuck all. <laughs> but, oh, mate. Oh, mate. it gave me some oh, stripes. Mate, I'll tell you what. I'm just, this is channeling my childhood. Oh, I'll tell mate. You what. And I just wanted this laptop. And I bought the most, like, at the, like, it was 2014 I bought this laptop, right? 2004. 2004 I bought this laptop. I'm like, for, end of 2004, it's like, like, 14, 
and I bought this laptop, it was like $2,600, went to, bought it from Rick Hart, which doesn't exist anymore. And this thing was just, you know, it was a beast. So much of a beast that it didn't even have an internal wireless card. Like you had to buy $65 extra, like <laughs> to get an external wireless card to put it into the laptop. Now no. that was my driving motivation. And I was like, mom, dad, I want a really good laptop. I want a really good computer. And they're like, cool, go get a job, mate. And I was yeah. like, no. They're like, well, if you don't, cool, don't look for us. You can either save, like, you can either go get a job or you can save up like until you're pretty much ready to buy a car and then you can get your laptop. So what's mm -hmm. it going to be? And I'm like, all right, I'll get a job. And then I remember um, I got the job, I work, 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 and I'd saved about four or $500, most money I'd ever made in my life um, after working there for like six months or whatever, every single weekend. And then I, I'm really uncoordinated. And then I kicked a football into my auntie's wind, windscreen, which, windshield. Bye-bye, $253 on the excess in that one. Of Ouch. course, I had to pay for it. Yeah. And I still remember that because, you know, I was, I was like, oh, fuck, oh, God, oh, what? And dad was like, cool, go get the money. You're paying for that one, mate. And I was just like, he was just, he was just disappointed. In, like, not disappointed in me. He was just disappointed that I had done that for me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, but, you know, I think that was one of the biggest lessons I learned about taking responsibility. And then that made me work, want to work even harder because I was like, I want this laptop. I want this laptop. And I think that's where it all came from. Plus, probably be the Italian heritage as well. Awesome. Yeah. Good answer. Because, I mean, you do, right? You're always, you're always buzzing. You're full of energy. Like, you're really, you're driven. And I, and I love that. I love hanging around, you know, people. I appreciate are, that. Thank pumping you. along, always wanting to do stuff. Because that's what I like. like my, fun, though, my, right? My, like, my problem is not ever, have you, when's the last time you said you were bored? <laughs> Mate, I wish I had the luxury of being like, oh, I'm so bored. Like, so bored. Like, it's just not possible. Like, right? there's, there's that many things I want to cram in. I mean, you're not in that zone, but I've got two kids as well. And it's oh, like, I take my there is just like, like, holy I can't even, I can't, I can't imagine having kids and trying to do like what I do. I, I yeah. Uh, uh, if man. there was 48 hours in a day, I'd still be looking for, for more time to pack yeah. other stuff in. And that's the thing, but you know, but you need to have, be, you need to have that drive, right? You need to be just like, yeah, let's, life's fun. Let's do this. That's let's, it. Let's fill it full of stuff. That's it. You know, if you don't, if you don't have the drive, like my biggest thing from people like, oh, how do you get, what, like, why are you so motivated? Like, how do you get the motivation? <laughs> I, you know, so all motivated. that. Yeah, straight up. Like, <laughs> yeah. and you know, again, I tell them the story about my parents, but at the end of the day, I've got crazy big goals that I'm trying to achieve. Um, and spoiler alert, long-term politics, but it's a whole nother can of worms. Um, that's what I'm striving for. And that keeps, that just puts, the macro goals puts everything in the micro, just makes like, life really, really, really short. And yeah. for anyone that's like not driven or lacking motivation or can't figure out what it is they want to do, go work a really shitty job like at a bakery like I did for 10 years, save up a bunch of money and then go on a big old YOLO of a holiday around the world and travel for as long as you can until you figure it out what it is you want to fucking do. Because yeah. that's what, like the trip that I had to, I guess, to bring this full circle, the spending a year abroad in the States was probably one of the, the best experience that I ever had because it was so humbling. It put me out of my comfort zone. It taught me so much about myself and what I wanted from life and all that kind of fun stuff. And when I came home and I, you know, had to finish my degree, I was ready to kind of like, I don't want to be an accountant. I'm going to try this marketing thing out. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> and here you are. So, and you got, a, we just talked about it. You got a lot on, right? How do you structure your week? Like what, you know, you, you, you've got a lot of stuff you want to pack in. You know, you've got different priorities, obviously vlogs, clients, different levels. Like where do you, like, do you set yourself pretty structured uh, um, week plans or how do you, how do you approach things? Yep. So um, this is uh, so this is something that I'm actually really struggling with at the moment. Uh, going back to I have hair in my mouth. I'm um, going back to uh, <laughs> the start of the business. Like I was the most structured. Um, like j everything was planned out. The got the tasks for tomorrow were you know time allocated. Um, I knew what I had to do, when I had to do it, what phone calls I had to have, how long they were allowed to last for, when my breaks were, um, all that kind of everything was so granular. And I I just I was I, like I. I mean, I impressed myself with how structured I used to be, right? And I say that because at the moment, uh, going back to not being any goals planned for this year, I'm just like floating all over the place at the moment. Like yeah. I'm getting everything done, but it's not structured. Things could be done a lot more effectively. Yeah. Just floating around. Um, so I guess this is something I'm working on at the moment. So going back to having that structure, having a time allocated and also having a routine. Um, I think one of the biggest things, especially... The Christmas, like December, late December, early January is like a really always bad time of year for me. Like not personally, but um, I guess in terms of my work life because yep. structure goes out the window because yep. you've got like, you know, fun and that's things fine. To do. Yeah, straight up, straight yeah. up. And, you know, family and all that kind of stuff. And that's all great. And I'm also like, oh, I'd rather just work at all, you know, but like got to take time out. 
Um, but what that does for me in terms of my like work routine, it throws me out and I'm just not in routine at the moment. So going back to like, I'm trying as of next week, we'll try kind of trying to start tomorrow, routine structured start times and finish times. And you, it's a lot easier to not have that structure when you run your own business. Cause like, oh, yeah. especially when you don't like, you know, I've got a staff member now and I've got a bunch of contractors, but you know, I can start work at home. I don't yeah. have to be at the office, you know, like yeah. I've done my own business, like I'll do what I want, but you give yourself that freedom and that uh, kind of uh, just do whatever you want, not do whatever you want, but I can do whatever you want, whatever I want, whenever I want. Yeah. And then everything's more responsibility. Oh yeah. (laughs) Everything starts to fall apart because you get out of that routine, you don't have a structured start time, a structured finish time. Um, Another thing as well that I, um, that I've been reminded of lately is Parkinson's law. You Mm -hmm. know what Parkinson's law is? So uh, those who don't know, Parkinson's law is basically where a task will either expand or shrink to fit the allocated time, which you give it. Right. And just think about it like, you know, like actually I'm not going to give an example, but essentially that's what it is, right? And I've noticed because I haven't been allocating time to all my stru- or structuring my days correctly and just been kind of a bit all over the place recently, things are taking way too long, mate. Mm. And I sit back and I audit myself and I go through, you know, like um, I'm doing the five minute journal, using the five minute journal app at the moment, which is amazing. Uh, it's yep. like the best $5 I've ever spent. But um, to, you know, what am I grateful for and what I hope to achieve today? And then I'm looking back at, you know, you go down, like you were saying before, you can go down these rabbit holes and it's like, I should not have spent an hour and a half of my time like I did today trying to fix up some dev, and, you know, I don't, I'm not a developer, but I spent an hour and a half of my time, which I shouldn't have, <laughs> no. fixing Can't up dev fix stuff on my, start, on, my, on my website. And, you know, you get in the hole, you're like, oh, I'm going to fix this. And it's like, I will not stop until it's done. And then you waste, you know, an hour and a half of your time. And then it's like, well, it's an hour and a half of billable client time you now have to catch up on. You idiot. So discipline, structure, and allocating the time. And I think when you allocate the time, I'm ranting now. I'm sorry, but no, 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 when you good. allocate that time, it, it doesn't allow you to do have task creep. Yeah. Because it doesn't. No, I'll just do this. I'll see if I can do this. I'll spend five more minutes on it. Yep. I'll, and then because if you've got that, it's like not two p.m. You've got a meeting or two p.m. You've got to start working on this. So that's going to take an hour, and then you've got to be out of the office by five. Yeah. And then you got to go to the gym, and then you got to go home and have some time to chill out. It's just so easy to fall out of, right? Oh, yeah. I, I have the same struggle. Like in and out. Like yeah. at times, I've been amazingly disciplined in my week. Um, I still keep certain disciplines, but like, yeah, you, you're right. You, you might have a three hour block and there's a couple of things you try and do. You realize two and a half hours in, you've barely finished that first thing. And you, you've probably got distracted a couple of times, but like the minute you, you really allocate tight blocks, you, you often achieve them. If not, you've, you're busting through other tasks. And if you take that five, 10 minutes, even the start of the day, just to really plan out what's going to happen. That's it. Like I try and, and write out my end goals. Of the day as well, and the day's good. Yeah. And the day's really good as well. And try and plan out what happens, you know, what, what you want <laughs> to happen and what the, the five minute journal is brilliant too, just as a bit of a, you know, what, what happens thereafter. Something that's cool that uh, myself and some other guys have done. You've talked about Ryan Holiday, the, daily, Ryan Holiday. the daily Stoic. Have oh, you? mate. Oh, Daily Stoic is amazing. Ryan Holiday is my, my oh, mate. So Ryan Holiday the, is my inner god. Put the two together carry them around and do daily stoic and then do your journal and Dope. just like follow that through. You just carry them as two books. Dope. And there's a few of us that have done that. And it's really cool because you always get that reflection. It then leads in and you then start doing That's a bit of journaling. Wicked. It's really cool. I like so that. So check that out. Oh, I love a, it. Yeah. It's my new best friend. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Um, yeah. A mate of mine started that one and a few of us do it now. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so that the timing, right? We have so much time and like, especially I think when we get really excited with a lot of stuff, which like you and I both do, it's easy just to get like, pull between all those things but yeah, yeah if you do break got it down it, you, you got really it. can get a lot done right if you're yeah. really struck and you've got to curb that excitement not curb it like you need the excitement and passion to play. Harness like, it. yeah you need yeah you need to like use it effectively yeah um and i've been like i think the reason i'm so like off um you know off track at the moment with my structure and time is because like i was mentioning earlier like i burnt out really badly uh earlier last year um and it's Nearly last, what, what were we in 2018 now? End of 2016, I burnt out bad, like yeah. bad, bad. Don't recommend burning out bad. Um, and then I got so, into a... So, re- do you mind, what, what happened there? What do you... Oh, just like... All right, um, so basically just worked myself into a hole. Um, there's only so much you can take, right? Like yeah. there's only like... I, I was doing 80-hour work weeks for a year and a bit with a f- few weeks off. Um, minimum 60 hours a week, yep. um, maximum, I think. And I was like, t- I timed all of it because I was like, oh, we'll get my stripes. Um, <laughs> I love the pain. <laughs> Sadistic fuck, Paul. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, no, I mean, some weeks, not hyperbole, I was doing like 90 plus hours, right? But I needed to and I wanted to. Yep. I didn't really need to. I wanted to, right? Yep. Um, and then there's only so much that you can do, so long you can do that for. And I got older. I mean, this is when I was 25. I'm 28 this year, but... 
yeah, I just burnt out. Then got really bad insomnia, um, couldn't sleep properly, um, wasn't eating properly, stopped going to the gym, just everything that like allowed me to function at that level yep. just started crumbling away because I wasn't taking care of my physical health. Yep. And then my mental health like suffered as a proper byproduct of that. Yeah, learned the lesson the hard way. But I think I've uh, kind of seesawed back to having all this structure and now it's just like, well, I'm just gonna chill and see how chill I can you have not not have too much structure and see how relaxed I can be and you know it's fun that balance all about the balance Matt <laughs> yeah it's sick sorry just making sure that's off nah look I've it's common right and I, I've I've been through some struggles as well over times and I just like you know it's we there's this hustle thing and we could we could dig into that a little bit but like the, the, everything with a grain of salt like yeah yes you got to hustle yes you got to do extra stuff but also you've got to look after yourself yeah. and and that's why I sort of go into the structure of the week because I like to I like to show people like if you know I like I, I like to think that this podcast is pulling out people's stories for people that are feeling a bit lonely early yeah. on in their business days that don't you know have the the networks that yeah. we're able to build over time you know yeah. to hear people's stories and go you know what that's that's where i'm at too that's it. there is and, and you know, on that sorry to cut you off yeah, no. on that like i'm fucking woo all the time energy 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 but like yeah. a lot of what you don't see behind the scenes is me just like you know especially when i was struck with my insomnia like i'll tell you what not being able to sleep when you know you've got to like work and hustle the next day and just yeah. not sleeping and just seeing like just disgusting black bags under your eyes and not having any energy to do anything and then going down the caffeine abuse and all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah. It's not fun. And you, the irony is you also, it's, it just sucks in general, but it also like, you can't get anything done because your productivity is like, you're offering it 25%, you know? Yeah. You just get um, worse and worse, right? Every day it. until you do something about it. That's it. That's yeah. it. And for me, um, <laughs> it just sometimes it for me or for me anyway, it just got to the point where I had to get really, really, really bad before it was able to get better. Yeah. Yeah. So this always sort of leads into the question. But what what's the one book that you would take into solitary ooh, confinement for ooh, one year? The obstacle, the obstacle is the way by Ryan Holiday. You <laughs> was going to be Holiday, and I thought yeah. you might go with the other book. Right, the obstacle is the way by Ryan Holiday. Yeah. Um, I'm literally I, I don't I hate reading. I yeah. hate reading. I read. I mean, okay. I have to have to read during the day. Always yeah. had a reading. Yeah. Um, and audiobooks are my jam. Audible subscription, love it. Um, I've probably the fourth or the fifth time that I've listened in the past year that I'm listening to the obstacles where Brian Holiday, yeah, either that or Ego's good. the Enemy, one of the two. I have to go back and listen. I, I, I think I, I listened to them both. Yeah. They're audible as well. Um, and that was probably about 12 months ago now. And it's probably really good. There's a, there's a few books that you yeah. come back to, right. And you'll be like, you know what? I need to actually continue to, to do that. The other massive one for us is the alchemist. There's yeah, a bunch of guys that check that out. Yeah, you, yeah, I will. It's a, it's fiction. It's a story. Yeah. But it's about effectively a boy called Santiago and following his personal legend or following his, where he's supposed to be his journey. Yeah. And cool. it's really cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, really cool book as well. But that's, no, a, like, that's a good question. I like that question. Yeah. Yeah, so that's... Um, Depends how long I'm in prison for, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well... Uh, but I mean, like, I mean I'm mean, still Ryan Holiday, but, like, <laughs> can I take his whole collection in? Like, you know what I mean? Well, someone... One of the answers I had the other day was comic books. <laughs> I'll take yeah. some comic books in, you know, because that, you know, I need to be cheered up. But I said, oh, I, I don't know what you've done. <laughs> you know, I haven't, yeah. really, haven't really qualified the question, but, yeah, you know, yeah. we'll just pretend you're just, yeah. just stuck away. But now Holiday's perfect, man. That's a great book. Yeah, seriously, so, check out Holiday. He's well, you'll like, you'll like this part. So um, what's your favourite Disney movie? Oh, you know what? I don't like Disney at all. At all. Oh, at Disney, Pixar, whatever. Don't or like, like any animation. Nah, no. just never been hot on it. Dragon no. Ball Z Not represent even. over 9,000, what, what? No. Um, but literally, no. Nah. Mary Poppins. Like, no, nah, nothing, nothing. 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 Nah, was wow. never into Disney as a kid. Um, was into Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z and like Beyblades and Digimon and that kind of stuff. It's like cartoons, but... Yeah, never got into Disney. Just never vibed. Really? Never. Wow. And it's not like my parents didn't try to introduce. Like, oh, I'm sure it's I would have. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure I would have watched it as a kid. I have no recollections or fond memories. Like, literally, like, I tell people that, like, <laughs> I tell women that, um, I, you know, don't tell girls that you don't like Disney. Just. Just, just don't. Just bad. Just bad. Like, I'm not, I mean, who doesn't like Disney in some well, it, oh, of some I just, variety? I'm just not a fan. Like, yeah. Not a fan. I know it's not a popular opinion. I just, it just never oh, really no, grabbed it's me. Just you know? new, I've never yeah, had it's, that. It's, it's weird. Yeah. yeah, weird. Wow. Like not, you know, Lion Kings. Like you know, any yeah, I watched things. Lion King, but I just, I just. Yeah. Can't do it. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's interesting. I have really short attention span, and may, I've just never revisited them as an adult. But um, I don't. Yeah, I mean, um, the thing, the reason why that question came up. 
being a parent is I'm now sort of rewatching a bunch of things <laughs> that I'd sort of forgotten about for many yeah. years. And it's like, it, it raises interesting things because and the reason why I ask the question is people often identify with the character. Yeah. Right? So there's like, you, someone will say The Lion King and you can sort of see that and someone will say, oh, you know, Toy Story or whatever. And you can yeah. sort of see the, the characters come out. So it's kind of a cool yeah, question no, I, to I lead into no, that. I feel you. Sorry to, sorry to run your no, parade. No, no, no. Well, yeah, you did anyway, Dragon Ball Z. You sort of, you sort yeah. of told me what, you know, what your alignment is. Yeah, that's... Um, no, I'm looking forward to eventually when I have kids to uh, go down the Disney Disney <laughs> rabbit hole again. Down the park. But I, I didn't finish watching Harry Potter and like all the, the series until I was like 25, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, just just late to the party. I have a lot of <laughs> really weird niche interests though. Like I could tell you anything about a bunch of different YouTubers that are like yeah. insignificant and big, the big realm of things. Just niche interests. Yeah, oh, that's cool, awesome. So, what's one weird app or some really interesting app or useful app that you've got on your home Ooh. screen thereabouts? Like, Ooh. what's something different? Thing oh, different. Let's have a look. Um, uh, business, uh, while well, I'm trying to find something unique, uh, Things, Things 3, um, the app, uh, just, it's like a to-do list on steroids, love okay. it. Things 3. Um, things yeah. 3, cool. um, and they've got, that's like, like $6.99 or $7.99 in the app store and then $79.99 on desktop, but it's, it's baller, just in terms of organizing all of your random thoughts. I don't okay. know about you, but I'm just, I'm done with, and I love the romantic, Romant, I romanticize the thing. I like write things out and On make it all pretty. With your squirt. Yeah. <laughs> so, squirt, 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 that? iPad, pencil, yeah, oh, yeah. whatever. I, uh, yeah, pencil. Like, <laughs> pencil, like whatever. Like I just like, I like doing things by hand, but then I also like, it's not an effective way of note taking and then using the notes part of my phone was just getting too much. Yep. Um, so yeah, that from productivity point of view, the things three, uh, five. Is that minutes. what you use for pro like you're in, the, in business or do you use other, another software like project management software? Um, well? oh, so I use active collab for project okay. management. Yeah. Um, but this is just your, like got to get stuff down, like, chuck it in that list kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So just kind of like, if I'm going on a minute, like I've just got too much stuff going on in my head and I just need to write it down yep. and tag it or yep. like add it to like a, I need to do this one day or next week or whenever yep. things three is I've really just started using it, but it's amazing from yeah, that right. as opposed to having random notes in my cool. phone. Yep. Or also, I'm um, using the reminder. So I'm all about Siri at the moment, right? So yep. I've got an Apple Watch. I use the reminders function to set up a bunch of different lists and different reminders. Yep. And then I use Siri on both like, you know, my Apple TV, um, my HomePod when it eventually gets released, uh, my phone and my watch. Um, so if I'm like, oh, I need toilet paper. You know, hey, Siri, add toilet paper to my shopping list. Yep, great. And does that. And, <laughs> and yeah. Siri's adding it right now. Right, and then I go to the, I go to the store, and I'm like, "Hey Siri, what's on my shopping list?" And then I'll read out what's on my shopping list. So that's a really yep. nice little. It's doing it now. Shut up, Siri. Um, <laughs> that's a nice little productivity hack, just in terms of too much stuff going on. Get it down in an efficient way. And then another cool app. I'm uh, I don't really have anything on here. My my phone's just all business. <laughs> I love the Qantas app. Are listening, man. Qantas. Oh, here we go. All right, Qantas app. All right. So if you were a Qantas frequent flyer, and I'm all about frequent flyer points. If you were a Qantas frequent flyer, and I get so excited. Qantas frequent flyer and you are a silver frequent flyer um, and let's say that you are not flying business and if you've got the Qantas app on your phone, yep. you can change your seat for free, right? Yep. And if you're a silver frequent flyer, with the app on the phone, you can change your seat up to five minutes before the departure of your flight, which basically means you can seat choose to get away from other people because other people suck, um, especially on a plane. Um, so you can seat choose up until the very end right or just before you get in the plane so yep. if the plane fills up you can just find a seat with this free seat next to you awesome nice little, nice little airline that's a little hack. good hack good yeah. hack good hack awesome. i've uh, worked that out uh, yeah last year so uh, five minutes sitting. right up to the last five minutes so you're boarding or oh, you're, you're at the gate but it was just before i think five to ten minutes before don't quote me on it but yep. i was checking it up to five five to ten minutes before i got uh before the boarding opened essentially yeah. and five awesome. ten minutes before that you weren't allowed to change anything. yeah but by that time most people should be checked you know more or less so yeah. you should be pretty unlucky to get a seat for That's the next it. year so you go oh awesome yeah. i like it good yeah. hack. good hack good hack cool all right my final question i like to wrap things up with just saying so what's one thing that people could do um one thing they can get you know do to take action to amplify their business what can they do what can they get started with you know simple complex just what gives them you know, I guess that first step to changing their business and their life. Uh, I work out what, what's not working. Yep. Right. For me at the moment, my biggest thing is the days aren't structured. Yep. My goal planning isn't done. And I've just been literally talking about it. That's the biggest thing for yep. me. And I know that by getting all that stuff sorted, all the other dominoes are going to fall. So you gotta, you gotta put some time aside, right? You gotta, that's what I mean. Like, yep. I know a similar thing. Like when you, when you're doing that, you need to put a good few hours away to go, all right, I need to sort this out properly. Yeah. You can't just make a quick two second that's decision. It. You got to figure that's it out. It. Right. So, so yeah, I think, um, identify what the biggest pain point in your business is yep. and really, really think about it. 
like why is it causing you pain is it a financial pain is yep. it an emotional pain and then just like get real honest with yourself why yep. why 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 and then once you answer those questions you be honest with yourself i think everything else gets easier in my experience that's been the case anyway that's it no, nah, awesome. I love it, man. Thank, thank you so much, you for, so much really for coming. It. So where can people find out about you, Paul? Website, hit us up with the vlog, course. Yeah, let's go know, plug, let's plug, plug. Um, so uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel <laughs> and you can see my antics on the, the interwebs. Uh, just search for Paul Ramondo on YouTube uh, and my handle and everything is at Paul Ramondo. So P-A-U-L-R-A-M-O-N-D-O. Awesome. I and uh, yeah, check out the website as well. It's a lot of a uh, lot of good utility in there. If I I've seen the new site. Stuff. The new site's great. Yeah, yeah shout out to Digital Union out. for yep. uh, building that one. Um, yeah, there's also um, rel- I'm not sure when this episode is coming out, but um, Facebook has just released a bunch of huge changes or plan changes to the newsfeed in terms of how organic reach is going to be affecting pages. Um, I just did an article with Social Media Examiner, which got dropped today. Um, huge dissemination of what's to expect. So definitely check that out on socialmediaexaminer.com too. Awesome. Love it, man. Yeah, look, a couple of weeks it'll go out. Um, just takes a bit of time for us to get the, uh, the back end sorted, as no, you know. No but um, yeah, look, thanks so much for coming yeah, in. Thank you so much for having like, me. Great really chat, man. Like, really cool. Pleasure. Yeah, Good really cool. We'll, we'll do this again, man. This is yeah, this you. Is fun. Well, um, we're going to get these vlogs. Coming. Appreciate it. Let's get these vlogs colliding at some point as well. Yeah, I think we should figure cool. something out. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Pop tags for days. Too easy. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Thanks so much. Peace. Cheers. Hey, guys. Matt Hannum here, and I hope you really enjoyed that Amplify Your Business podcast. I thought the episode was really exciting, and I'd love to hear your comments as well. Um, We also have plenty of other episodes, so check us out on the iTunes store.